Good afternoon. So I think we can start. Um, so hello, my name is Emilia Maki. I work for Innovance uh, as an OpenStack uh, automation engineer. Hello everyone, I'm Sylvain Chin. I work at Innovance as a software engineer. So uh, today we are going to talk about um, high availability in neutron and three agents. This is a, like a hot topic in neutron because uh, we wonder that a lot of people uh, deploy in, uh, the L3 agent in production. By the way, we wonder how many people in the room is deploying neutron and three agents in production today. Okay. Good. And do you feel like this guy? Yeah? A little. Who feels like this guy in the room? Me. Me. Okay. So what's the problem in the L3 agent current implementation? So if you, if you use the L3 agent in production, your tenants will create uh, virtual routers, and all the virtual routers will be scheduled on the L3 agent nodes. The current problem is that if you lose a L3 agent, um, if you lose one or two, the virtual machine will uh, lose the connectivity from external networks, and also they won't be able to uh, reach the internal networks between uh, uh, tenant networks. So that's a big issue in production. However, in uh, ISOS, we had some cool features. Uh, we are going to talk about two features today. Um, the first one is about uh, bringing a new scheduler in the L3 agent. Uh, it's called the list, ro list router scheduler. The ID is uh, instead of a randomly schedule a virtual router on the nodes, uh, you can now um, schedule the router on the L3 agent where you have the least number of uh, routers. So you can win in scalability and um, and also, uh, you don't break the existing infrastructure. The other nice feature, it's not related to HA, but just to talk about the new features in the L3 agents. The new cool features is about uh, the ability to uh, schedule um, uh, more than one external network to uh, a single, uh, single L3 agent by using the provider networks. So previously, you couldn't uh, use uh, more than one external network on the L3 agent. And uh, since high source, you can now, uh, by using the provider networks, uh, having more flexibility by having uh, multiple external networks. So the use case is probably the pri uh, pu pu public cloud. When you have a lot of uh, floating IP pools, you can now have uh, multiple external networks and uh, connect them to the provider networks. However, with uh, all these features, we still not have HA. That means, again, if you lose a L3 agent, you lose all the virtual routers and the floating IPs and so on. So at Innovance, we uh, developed uh, a tool which is not part of Neutron. This is a, this is a tool that we uh, introduced in Grizzly. And it works on Grizzly, uh, Havana, and Icehouse. It's open source. You can download and uh, install it. So the idea is to install a third-party service running on all the L3 agent uh, nodes. Um, so by using RPC, it will check the actual L3 agent uh, status. And uh, if there is a, a failure on the L3 agent, it will reschedule all the resources. So in this picture, you can see that you have a, a virtual router A scheduled on the first L3 agent. And if you have a failure, which could, which could be a system or network failure, the service will reschedule uh, the resources on the second, uh, the second L3 agent. So we think that it's, it's still not the solution because, first of all, it's not introduced in Neutron. So it's not part of the, the project officially. 
Uh, also, it's not a full HA because you still have a downtime. The service is not stateful. Uh, so using it in production could be a bit uh, tricky when you have a lot of resources on the S3 agent because you, you can have like uh, one minute downtime depending on the number of uh, virtual routers that you have. However, it works. Uh, we are going to show you a, sh a short demo and it works. You can, uh, you can install it on existing platforms. You don't break uh, OpenStack code. It's just, uh, just another service that you plug to the L3 agents. Uh, the service is uh, quite smart because it uh, it detects when the service uh, is uh, is is down. However, the network uh, will be uh, isolated from the L3 nodes, and also the service is distributed. So if um, if you run the ill check on uh, multiple nodes, uh, it will um, uh, when the when the reschedule process will uh, will will happen. Uh, there is a lock system that will lock the other real check to be sure that uh, we don't reschedule, reschedule two times the, the same resources. Uh, we, so at conclusion, we think it's not the solution, but uh, we are, Sylvain is going to show you after uh, the demo uh, two eventual solutions that will be uh, introduced in OpenStack uh, Juno, so the next table release. So we're going to show you a demo of the ill check on our infrastructure. Um, so in this demo, we are going to spawn a VM. So this is ISAUS, as you can see in the dashboard. We're going to spawn a, a VM, which is a CROS uh, image. Um, we are going to um, show you that we can ping the VM. Um, obviously, we have uh, two L3 agents to show you the, the HA process. Okay, so the VM has a floating IP, and uh, the, this floating IP is connected to a virtual router. So at the top left, you have the uh, neutron agent status. So you can see that uh, uh, they are all working for now. At the top uh, right, you have the uh, second L2, uh, L3 agent, which currently hosts the virtual router. We are going to uh, bring it down later to show you the failover. At the bottom left, we can ping the VM. You can see the namespace of uh, the external network in the top, in the top uh, right. And uh, so Sylvain just run a command to stop the L3 agent. And we can see the, in the bottom right that the namespace has been rescheduled on the other L3 agent. And uh, the, again, the, the failover happened. And we can now uh, reping the, the virtual machine. So here, it's, it's quite short. The, down, the downtime is quite short because we only have one, one resource, which is uh, one virtual router. But in production, when you have uh, hundreds of virtual routers, we, we, uh, we could see that uh, the downtime was about two minutes. So depending on your uh, scheduling process, it could be long to, to reschedule the resources. Um, so this is definitely not the solution adopted for uh, neutron development. And in, uh, in ISOs, uh, we started some work on uh, some features, and uh, Sylvain is going to continue uh, explaining uh, the next step for bringing the L3 agent in production with HA. Okay, thank you, Emilia. No, I want to remote. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, two solutions to new approach uh, that should be uh, introduced uh, in the next release. Uh, the first one is a very happy approach. The idea of this approach is to use uh, is to to use the VRP protocol, which is a, a network standard. And the the goal of this uh, development, this uh, approach, is to to not introduce too 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 much changes uh, in the neutron uh, 
uh, the current neutron uh, design. So uh, we will not have too many changes in the API, no changes in the API, uh, just a few configuration, few extra configuration parameters in the neutron config file. Uh, should work for, of course, with uh, external network and internal networks, and doesn't change anything uh, to the current uh, uh, services relying on the, on the L3 node. So the firewall as a service, VPN as a service, and the LBS, of course, uh, uh, will not change. Uh, we have an active passive design for the routers and active active design for the L3 agent. Um, and the goal, the final, the main goal is to the main goal is to reduce the, the downtime, of course. So we are in this picture, we, we see what's happened in terms of the the scheduling. Uh, we can see that there is a, each agent is able to to host. Uh, either the master version of a router or, or the, the slave version of a router. That's why I just said we have a, a, um, an active passive uh, design from the router point of view and active active uh, design from the agent point of view. Since we can have uh, on the same agent uh, uh, both active or passive uh, uh, routers. So the implementation is Quite straightforward. We have uh, just we just have a, a, a new uh, L3 scheduler just to to schedule a, a, a router uh, uh, twice uh, on uh, on two different uh, agents. Uh, uh, one version will be uh, one the master version will be hosted on the on an L3 agent, and the slave version will be hosted on another one. Uh, Although there is a little change uh, in terms of the database schema, a new uh, attribute for the virtual router uh, uh, is introduced uh, just to, to specify the VRP ID uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the router. Uh, and if, you, if we look at the L3 agent side, uh, finally, the, all the IP will be converted to a, to a, to a VIP, and the interface management uh, uh, will be handled by the keep alive D, uh, uh, by keep alive D. Uh, optionally, we could uh, use a contract D to support to 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 keep the TCP session alive. It's an option. Uh, if we look at this picture, we can see in more detail uh, what's happened exactly. We have a keep alive D instance per network uh, per sorry per per router uh, running inside the 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 router namespace. Uh, we can see also that the, all the IP is just converted to a VIP and managed by uh, Keep Alive D. And there we can see there is a special uh, um, interface, an HA interface, uh, where the, the, all the VRP traffic uh, uh, will go uh, in order to just uh, isolate the, the VRP traffic. There is some limitation, few limitations. Finally, uh, the one is uh, the number of router uh, per tenant. Uh, since we have only one with this design, uh, we have only one uh, HA network per tenant. So, due to the limitation of the VRP protocol, we have a, a limitation of uh, 255 uh, virtual routers. We could remove this uh, this limitation just by allowing the to add the allowing the tenant to add more than one uh, HA uh, a network. Uh, it's a great uh, improvement in terms of HA, but not uh, in terms of uh, uh, scalability. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a new uh, proposal. I'm happy to see that there is uh, there are uh, some developer of this proposal. Which is uh, ah just before maybe we can just uh, start a little demo yeah thank you Emilia so this demo is pretty is pretty similar to the the previous one so let's start by just creating a, a, a virtual router. Maybe you can say that the uh, router process is the same for the end user. You c you yeah. The end user doesn't see that he's creating a HA router. Yeah. 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 There is no change in, uh, uh, for the API, so we can do everything uh, with Horizon, for example. 
So now I've just I have just uh, attached uh, uh, the virtual router to an external network, and we can see that the, the two uh, virtual uh, router namespaces are created on the two virtual uh, uh, two uh, L3 agents. So now we just uh, uh, start a keep TCP dump just to to see where uh, the traffic uh, will go, and we can do that on the both uh, L3 agents on the both uh, router namespaces since uh, all the interfaces I is created are created. Now we are going to 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 attach the the router to a, a private network. And then uh, we are going to start uh, a virtual machine. Okay, now we have the, the, the VM uh, starting. Uh, we can uh, associate uh, a floating IP and do the same thing, uh, just start a ping to, to see uh, uh, where the traffic goes. So it's the same terminal like before. You have the second L3 agent on the bottom Right, which is uh, for now is passive, and the active L3 agent, the active router is hosted on the top uh, top right. Exactly. So we can now we have the connectivity. We can see the the traffic uh, is going through the the L3 node on the top right, and we are going to to just shut down the uh, this node to see what's uh, what happens. Okay. Okay, the traffic is now stopped and we will see that okay, now we can see that the traffic now is go going through the the L3 node on the on the top uh, on the bottom right. I think So we just saw uh, that we, we have a solution, uh, an approach to, to reach uh, HA. But uh, as I said just before, we, we could improve the, the, the scalability. And that's the, the goal of, the, of this approach, of this uh, solution, uh, which is a DVR, DVR solution for distributed virtual router. The goal of this approach is to distribute the routing uh, to uh, each compute node. Uh, so to improve the east-west traffic, but not only, also to improve the north-south uh, traffic, uh, especially for the virtual uh, for the floating IP. And, uh, some some services running on the on top of the L3 agent could stay could be distributed as well, probably the firewall the service, but so, so some others uh, should be uh, run uh, on uh, on. Something like a classical L3 node, which will be a, a, a service node. Uh, if we look at the what's happened uh, currently without the DVR, we can see uh, in this picture that uh, if a, a VM1 wants to, to send some packets to a VM2 hosted, uh, plugged on a different network, uh, the traffic will have to, 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 to go through uh, the L3 agent, so through a, a, a virtual router, even if the even if the VM are hosted on the same uh, compute nodes. And if we look at the, this picture, uh, we can see what's happened uh, in terms of east-west traffic. Uh, we can see that uh, there is a, uh, a DVR instance uh, started on each compute node, so the traffic will go uh, through the through uh, uh, each uh, instances of the DVR. Uh, we don't have any more need to, uh, to, to go through uh, the L3 node. Uh, in this picture, we can see what's happened when we uh, associate uh, a floating IP to a VM. 
So the, the VM, will, the floating IP will be uh, scheduled on the, the compute node hosting the, uh, the VM. So um, as the same as before, uh, no need to go through the L3 agent uh, anymore. And finally, since uh, the GVR is not able uh, currently to, uh, to, to implement the SNAT uh, uh, capabilities, uh, when we start a VM uh, without any floaty IMP, uh, we still need to have a, a, an SNAT mechanism uh, to get a, a, an internet connection. Uh, we, can, we can combine the two solutions in one. Uh, so we can have the service node, uh, which will be, which, uh, uh, will host the, um, uh, the SNAT mechanism, but also some services which uh, could not be uh, hosted by, uh, by the GVR. Uh, so we can see that uh, on, the, on the top, we can see that there is uh, the, the, the service node running on, the, on top of the VRP, and we still have the, the GVR uh, on each compute node. And I think that's it. So thank you. Uh, if you have any question. So it's open for question if you have. Yeah. Uh, with the approach of distributing virtual routers um, on the on the uh, compute node, not on the compute nodes, on the um, network nodes. Does it scale to two, or co can you have more than two nodes that host the routers? So can you have, for example, five or 10 network nodes that all have the same router? You, you, want, you want to distribute more than, you want to have uh, more than one master slave, yeah, right? Is that possible or not? Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. Just a quick question about the VRRP um, capabilities. Are yeah. you also using a single MAC address, a generated MAC address for the VRRP? And if you are, are you pushing out the tunnel updates to fix all the locator records? And if not, are you registering both locator records when you start the router? What was? Yeah, a single MAC IP. Yeah. So you are, so so you are doing the tunnel update on failure as well. Yeah. Is L2 populate required then? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm from HP. Uh, in case of VRRP, uh, are we creating, trying to? create the NAT session even on, on all the nodes? And if so, how? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? I mean, uh, the, NAT, the NAT session table, uh, let's say on the, on, on the network nodes, let's say we have multiple, let's say as we told, multiple network nodes are there. And uh, the traffic or the outgoing traffic, NAT may be created on one of the, one of the node, but uh, uh, how about in the other nodes? I sorry, I didn't get you. You you, you mean uh, you you are talking about the the HA network? Correct. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean exactly with the HA? Uh, I mean, in case of HA network, yeah. is there any issue with the NAT? Uh, with the NAT? Yeah. No, I don't see any issue with the NAT. Okay. Yeah. You showed a demo of the VRRP solution. Uh, yeah. Is it actually implemented in Neutron or or not? It's it it is currently in review. Okay, so what you showed uses the yeah. You can you can just uh, download on the patches patch, and okay. just yeah. You just okay. have to test. Thanks. I think you made a documentation to yeah yeah yeah. There is a documentation to deploy uh, all the patch to apply all the patch, all the patches and to test it. Uh, you can you, ca you can yeah check that on the wiki, uh, the OpenStack wiki. Do do you think it makes sense to uh, uh, you uh, to uh, add uh, the keep alive D capabilities to the L3 agent directly and not use an external dependency for uh, keeping VIPs for uh, virtual routers. Um, so uh, you... Uh, it's, it's actually the case as an option. If you want to enable HA, automatically the L3 agent will be managed by the keep alive D backend for the VIPs. But uh, can uh, L3 agents uh, communicate directly to each other to uh I want to you, you want to remove the, the keep alive D dependency? Yes. Yeah, yes. you want to improve to, to implement the VRP protocol directly in the in the in the agent finally. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's not the goal of the L3 agent. 
I think there's, yeah, maybe, maybe not, but currently the, the, the implementation of Keep Alive is pretty good. And we have a lot of features like uh, we can execute uh, some script when there is a failure, which is great because we can, for example, we can start a metadata a process when there is a failure and also send another script. So, thank you. Uh, have you considered uh, Pacemaker, for example, instead of VRRP? Yeah, that would be the option at all. Actually, with Pacemaker, you still have a downtime. You, you currently, you can install S3 Agent using Pacemaker. I know a lot of people is, is using it. Uh, for example, we don't because it's the same. Uh, for, for example, with Pacemaker, you, you have to run L3 Agent in active passive, but you have one L3 Agent with, which does nothing because the Pacemaker didn't run the, the process, right? Yes, yeah. So you, you lose in scalability because you have to deploy the double of double number of L3 agent nodes, and the half half of them does nothing. So you lose a number of servers for nothing. Yeah, well, yeah. With the, with the current implementation of the VRP solution, we can an L3 agent is able to to uh, to host uh, both uh, um, slave version of a router and also a master. So. We don't yeah, we in, don't the yeah. in the VRP s in the VRP design, your L3 agent could be uh, both master and backup for some networks, for yeah. some routers. All right, thanks. So, um, yeah. uh, in the case uh, with the L3 agent on each compute node, how do you deal with uh, VM live migration? For example, for the floating IP. Uh, I don't know exactly since uh, it is currently in. Development exactly, um, but uh, I think it's uh, something that sh should be addressed. I don't know how. I don't know when. Because um, having having the floating IPs at the edge of the network, um, you know, up north, kind of yeah. makes sense in that case. Yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding um, both uh, approach. In the first approach, um, I saw your slides are showing. Uh, two L3 agents on two different uh, network nodes, um, and each of them have their own indiv individual VMs. Does that imply that the first approach actually have active active mode? So one one layer three agent is going to accommodate or serve the the layer three uh, functionality to one subset of the VM. Another layer three agent is going to serve another subset of uh, subset of the VMs. I'm, I'm not sure to understand, but as, uh, as I said just before, an L3 agent hosts both uh, the master version of the slave version, could, in could uh, host uh, the both version, but for two different uh, routers. Mm. Two different, okay. Uh, my, my second question regarding the second approach, uh, which is a VRP. Uh, I assume in this case, a VR VRP can only handle the switch over for the tenant network from inside to outside, is that correct? Yeah. And how about from uh, inside to uh, from outside to inside direction? So no, sorry, I didn't get you. So from uh, let's assume you have a router, it's you have external network, and the, you also have uh, the floating IP address uh, tied to the external network. In that case, when you switch over to the another router or layer three agent, how the traffic from outside to inside is being handled? Yeah, you, you you have to you have to 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 uh, to attach your uh, your L3 agent all your L3 agent to the same external network, thanks to the provider network. So the use case is to using the provider networks mm. and to connect to uh, your provider network to the external networks. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so you you have all your L3 agent connected to the same networks. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my Hi. name is Charles Kim from Arista. Uh, I have one question about the VRRP implementation. As I know, VRRP is active standby, and they yeah. have to use the Keep Alive to track the status of the peer routers. Have you ever considered the uh, active active mechanism like the virtual ARP or based on the anycast mechanism? 
yeah, it's it's finally it's a, it's a proposal and and uh, since we we have a, a, an active active design from the L3 point of view it's not mandatory to have oh. an active active design so yeah. you you will replace VRP by something active active do you have an example of protocol or of standard yeah or actually the VRP it, uh, usually they used for the pairing of uh, louders but uh, in case of the virtual uh, any case uh, ARP mechanism can use the multiple louders. It depend. Uh, it doesn't depend depend on the pairing mechanism. So maybe more scalable. I think at this stage it's just it's just a first implementation to bring the feature. Maybe later we could think think about uh, this kind of setup more scalable and with active active uh, architecture, right? Yeah, and also we just uh, use uh, Keeper ID to manage the, the interfaces, but finally we could use something else. Yes, maintaining the, the st uh, tr keep tracking of the status, it may be a yes, burden and cause the, some kind of the scalable issue. So yes, I think. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is Vivek from HP. So yeah. in this implementation, uh, the there will be two L3 agents that will be listed in the neutron agent list, right? Like uh, both of them will be listed, right? Yeah. So both the agents should have an uh, should have a unique external network IP assigned to their uh, you know external networks, right? Yeah. So when a, when a traffic comes from outside to inside, and say it uses an external IP to reach the, you know to to reach it into the cloud, when a failover happens, right? So you know, there will be a loss of traffic, right? So the one you showed had no loss of traffic because that was an east-west traffic. But in a north-south traffic, I think in such an implementation, we'll have loss of traffic, right? Mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure to, to, uh, to, to get you. I mean, wh uh, when, you, when you have the failover, your traffic uh, is moving on to the other node thanks to VRP on the both side in, th in the north and south. So I, I don't see where you have lost of traffic, because well, we, we are tracking TP, TCP connection, and we are tracking uh, all the traffic thanks to VRP. So I, I don't see where you have lost of uh, packets. Okay, so when when you have a frame uh, when you have a frame from external network coming inside to the router, uh, the the router that is the the the, stand, the router on the standby uh, L3 agent or the second active L3 agent, so that that router will will keep the same external network IP, is it? Yeah, 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 of okay. course. Yeah, yeah, okay. of course, Thanks. of course. Yeah, wh wh when you have the, actually when you create a, r a router, the namespace is created on both nodes, okay. but the, the floating IP or the external IP is created only on one node. Okay. And when, when you have the, the failover process, thanks to VRP, the, the Keeper Live D will just migrate the, the VIP, so the external IP, to the other nodes, so you, you don't have problem with NAT and features. Okay. Okay. You don't lose all the IP is, is migrated. Yeah, I mean for uh, for that, let's say we take the two net two network node, one net N1 and N2. On N1, there is an outgoing packet. For it, we have done a source NAT and you created a session, and that N1 goes down and uh, N2 takes over now, but that session is not there. So how the packet will be handled? That was my earlier question. Yeah, uh, we, 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 we plan to use contract D to keep the session. I was just going to say maybe the answer is that we're, you're going to do uh, an ARP broadcast on the failover, and that's going to reduce the packet loss, and maybe that's what's missing here is that... I don't know. It's not. Okay. <laughs> Any question? I have a question. Like yep. you are introducing an internal RPC, like RPC mechanism between to communicate between the active and the standby. So, is there a redundancy for that RPC bus? So, sorry, wh what you RPC? Are, you are using a RPC bus between the active and the standby to exchange the RP keep, keep alive messages, right? No, 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 no. no, no we no, have. No. A, uh, if you look at the architecture, we have. Uh, so, this is a picture under the hood where you have. Uh, oh, could you? Uh, could you turn on the screen, please? C could you just uh, turn on? Thank you. Um, 
So if you look at the picture, you have a dedicated network for HA, which handles the VRP traffic. So uh, what, what is the mechanism between these two to communicate? Is it again the same global bu RPC buses used or the internal RPC buses used? No, no, it's, no. it's just VRP uh, packets uh, sent uh, through the, the HA network. So when you create a router, the router is scheduled on, on both L3 agents. And between the L3 agents, you, you have a dedicated networks, which is called here HA. And these networks uh, handle the VRP traffic. And when you have a downtime, <coughs> uh, let's say, in the first L3 agent, the, thanks to VRP, the, 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 the traffic will go to the second L3 agent. You don't have RPC or so something like this. Does it need additional interfaces, or it will take the management interface for exchanging the key palai messages? Mm, no, it's just, it just, uh, it just a virtual networks, uh, not reachable by the tenant. So the tenant doesn't see the, this network. Okay. Do I? Answer the question or no? Yeah? So you have up here, you have the HA um, on a dedicated network. Would it be possible to use whatever your neutron provider is to generate that dedicated network to get around that 255 limit? Yeah, not with this implementation, but could be. Okay, we have five minutes if you have more questions. Okay, okay. thank so you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Bye.